Ladies and gentlemen from the theater at Madison Square Garden here in New York City, the action continues with six rounds scheduled in the featherweight division. It is being brought to you by Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated, along with their great sponsor, Tecate Con Caracter. Our three judges scoring on a 10-point must system will be Ken Ezzo, James Pierce, and Alan Rubenstein. Our referee in charge, the third man in the ring, will be Johnny Callis. Introducing to you first, fighting tonight out of the blue corner, he's wearing gray with blue trim and weighed in at 126 and a half pounds. Fighting out of Renton, Washington, by way of Colima, Mexico, he brings a professional record consisting of five wins, two defeats, two draws, with two of his five wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Marcelo El Gallito Gallardo. And his opponent across the ring fighting tonight out of the red corner. He's wearing blue with silver and ringing in at 127 pounds. Hailing from Barranquitas, Puerto Rico, he is undefeated with 10 wins. Six of his 10 wins come by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Christopher Bitufo Diaz. Marcelo, Christopher, if you restrain your instructions in the dressing room, I want you to protect yourself at all times, but above all, obey my commands at all times. First command is right now, touch gloves, and the bell rings box. Six rounds or less, featherweight attraction, Mr. Gallardo coming into the ring with a sleeveless down parka. I have never seen that before, and that says something in the world of boxing against Christopher Diaz. He's in the Verdeo camp, El Diamante camp, same trainer. He is described as a boxer puncher. He has good technique. Gallardo is a busy guy. Throws a ton of punches. Might not be as skilled. Here at Madison Square Garden Theater, round one. The light blue trunks is the Puerto Rican fighter. Takes one to the body. Look at fighters, you know, I've been talking on the back of that. Fighters, trainers, prima donnas, et cetera, et cetera, boxing generation. And nowadays, with dieting and supplements and with personal training, you can look at a fighter and tell how serious he is about a fight by looking at his body. And that plays a great part in how their mindset is as far as vic being victorious. Gallardo look a little soft to you, Monkey? Uh, of course he does. All right. Diaz assessing in round one. Dips down for the left hook. Snappy jab. That too, pal. We've seen some bad looking guys with some nasty shots in them. So, you see promoter Bob Arum there in the top row. Beginning to fill up here in the theater. A lot of people are going to be here to see Shawnee Monahan, the pride of Long Beach, Long Island. Please don't look past that. He's in against uh, Colombian Fulgencio Zuniga. Shawnee headed towards a uh, title fight maybe the end of the year. So he's on our watch list. Favorite of matchmaker Brad Goodman, that's for certain. And Gallardo trying to do some work. Diaz backed up against the ropes. Sean is a really good guy on top of everything. We like it when the good guys do well. Yes, the other saying was the good guy is going to finish last. Yeah. Well, not these days. Trust me, Bob. You're a very upbeat guy. I like working with you. You're a good guy to know. You, you keep me upbeat and happy. Thank you, man. And Diaz. Getting the better of Gallardo in this round. Working a little bit harder, a little bit of the better ring general. The 
first of all, Galata is I mean, that's the first time I, the second time I see him throw a jab. You know? He comes in, but he, he he comes in very square. So being with Diaz, him being in the camp with with, with Felix, he should have a lot of experience and a lot of confidence in his fight. Diaz did eat a right hand from Gallardo. And Gallardo busier with the jab. I think he's hearing Monty over here. Almost the end of round one here at MSG Theater. Finish round one. Diaz against Gallardo. Featherweight six rounds or less. On a card topped by Nicholas the Axeman Walters. And of course, big Puerto Rican Day weekend. Felix El Diamante Verdejo. Heading towards round two. Mario Rodriguez, Abel Torres in the corner. The joint is filling up. Yep. Good vibrancy in the air. My first match for a fight was in here for the Golden Gloves in 1994. You're not that old. You couldn't be that old. Yeah, I'm 44. I'm happy to be 44. A lot of people didn't make that, that number and that age. Good point, though. Good point. Now round two, starting featherweights, Diaz and Gallardo. Diaz and the light blue trunks. The name of that color might be teal or something, but I'm never good with colors. Is it teal? Friend to the left tells me it is Teal Woods. What, you, you skip kindergarten, Woods? Supposed to teach you colors there, man. All right, remedial work to be done. Christopher Diaz, the prospect here in the Verdeo camp. Well-schooled, well-tutored. Tutored. Ricky Marquez is the trainer. Real tight with this bunch of guys in the gym. You see him looking to bring underneath his right hand. I like Diaz. I like his, his, I like his stance. I like his confidence. And he has basic fundamentals. Of it. And a lot of these guys, a lot of these young guys, and you can tell that in the trainer. They, they, uh, especially coming from Puerto Rico. A lot of guys said, look at Trinidad. Dad. Train Dad was nothing fancy about him. He's a great body puncher. He had a close show. He had great fundamentals. And we're going to uh, talk to Christina Poncher. He's been, she's been here all fight week, has so much intel. Christina, what's going on? Well, this isn't anything deep in thought, but I figure since I'm the woman here on the panel, I should talk about the shorts, the color you're referencing. You see the nickname on the band is Patufo, yeah, which that? means Smurf. Whoa. So you see the color of the trunks oh. like a Smurf. So we That's his it, nickname in Puerto Rico. We call it Smurf Blue? I guess we'll go with Smurf Blue. Smurf Blue. <laughs> and a big left hook from Smurf Blue. Thanks, Ms. Poncher. And thanks for watching on Top Rank website, no punch, no punch, no punch. streaming live. We appreciate it. Going to be kicking off on HBO a little bit later. Right now, Diaz did eat a right hand when he was backing up Monty. Is that something you see in his defense there? Yeah, right then on cue, backing up straight, getting yeah. caught with a right. Yeah, that, that happened twice in a row. He's getting caught with a right hand, and that's backing him straight with his hands down. But those are little mistakes you're going to make as, a, as, as coming up in the ranking. And you either correct them or you don't. Exactly. Or you become a, a fool of your bad habits. <laughs> Less than a minute left, round two. Gallardo pressing forward, trying to take it to Diaz. And the right hand having absolute success. And he's telling the referees, I'm getting pushed, ref, and I don't like it. He has a little Gladys. distracted there. Yeah, Glado was with his head. That, I'm surprised that wasn't a head, but a vicious one. And the right hand from Diaz. He got to tighten up on that. Needs more head movement, foot movement, something. And to round two now here in Madison Square Garden Theater in NYC. A lot of these things fight going to the head. Solid round from Gallardo there. Sorry. Diaz is feeling smurf blue, a little bit blue in the corner. There wasn't particularly great round, eating too many right hands there. 
But you know what? Let me just say this, right? These type of fights are what you need to build your fighter. These are great uh, fights of competitive fights. And these are the fights that you need to build a fighter, to build his confidence. Gallardo having some good luck in that round. You see the left hook, you see the right hand follow, backing Diaz up against the ropes and then getting shoved back and getting right back to work. Solid round from Gallardo. Will Diaz come back? Answering with volume and power punching in round three. Featherweight six rounder list. <laughs> Referee telling Gallardo, don't leave with your head. Little warning to start the round in round three here. Diaz being busier to start the round. Great combination. And then eight, another right hand backing out. So, still hasn't corrected that. That's asking a lot, Monty, correcting something in between rounds. It's something that's going to have to be worked on in the gym. Yeah, but what you can see, you've seen Diaz did. He, he fell inside after he got caught. I mean, you know, you're gonna, he's going to make a lot, of, uh, a lot of young mistakes. That's what all fighters do. But this is learning on the job. This is one of those... You can't afford to make too many mistakes on the job and you don't get clocked out. Right hand from Diaz, maybe his best land so far in round three. To his credit, I can say fighting a guy like Lotto, you're not gonna look nice. You're not gonna look good all the time. He's an unorthodox fighter. His bounce is off, his punches come from every which way. Like more of like a Maidana. Rugged rumble like a Marcos Madonna, says Monte Barrett. Round three, checking down, 140. And less the right hand for Gallardo, his primary weapon. It's worked against the Puerto Rican Diaz. Monte Barrett, how does Diaz defend against that right hand? Is it with movement of head? Is it with movement of feet? Is he being too predictable in this defense? Why is he getting caught with the right hand? He's being caught with the right hand because he's not changing his height for one. He's not moving his head. If you look at Diaz, he doesn't really change his height. He stays right there. Too tall, too stationary, says Monte Barrett. And then he got cut with the left hook, too. Gallardo, more decent work in round three. Solid work. Even fight. Solid matchmaking. Good stuff here. As you can see, but I'm saying, um, Gallardo's not, he's not moving his height. He's not changing his height. He's right there with his That's a cardinal rule. Change your height, give them different angles. Don't be just a stationary target. That was to change his height just there. Oh, Diaz good. got caught with a right uppercut. Gallardo follows with a short right. Body work change. Volume from Gallardo. Gallardo's a game fighter. I'm impressed. I'm honestly impressed. Sometimes you can lose a fight and still win over people. Technique is not perhaps the most refined, but he makes up for it in volume. And down to end of the round. More good work from Delano. And some recap action here, Monty. Gallardo, stunning right hand. To recap, Gallardo, more nice work at the right hand. Oh, straight up a cut. Straight up a cut. He has a jab. Fair to say that Gallardo has surprised us to the upside to this point in this featherweight attraction in MSG theater. You know, Gallardo is a game fighter, and all the, all the fights we've seen so far. Come to fight. Can't judge a book by the cover, can't judge by records only. Diaz got a lot to prove here to start this round. Has to tilt the momentum back his way in round four. A persistent snappy jab would be a good start, I would think. Yeah, a lot of a lot of starting to change his height a little bit. He, he got he missed he went out a few punches like Diaz, some big punches. 
But DS team really focusing in weight and in weight, what you call it, radar to just winning. You can look at him, look in his eyes. And it's suspected of him. Look at his trainers. Look who's been in training channel. It's only, you know, you, be, you fight, you spar with great guys, you become great. Diaz piling up the volume. Gallardo answering with the right hand and body work and the sneaky right hand. Keeping the distance he likes. Getting room to throw his shots. Diaz perhaps caught in between. Either get up close and smother him or get a little more distance for yourself. And the right hand lands for Diaz. And he misses badly with the right hand. Yeah, well, Diaz got to stick to his basic fundamentals, which is his jab. He has to stick to his jab and work everything from that point. And that, that jab there, flicking, non-existent. Not even a jab, not even a real jab. Yes, he's throwing his right hand. Every time he throws a, a, a right, right lead, he's always missing. Besides the body shot. And now he's starting to pick his shots in the uh, I think Diaz should go to the body more. He's pretty good body puncher. But he put everything behind the body puncher. What he do is have to take his time on Look how he winds up on his body shots. Just take his time, set his punches, pick all the shots. Gallardo chooses his placement nicely. Body work and head work. Diaz slip punches there. And now round four. Underneath a minute left. Going to be interesting if we do make it to the scorecards here. How much credit the judges give Gallardo? Gallardo is landing the uppercut. He throws two uppercuts. And I don't know why Diaz is getting caught with these uppercuts like that. If Gallardo had enough sense, he'd come back with a left hand. There's absolutely nothing on the pawing Diaz jab. A non entity. Gallardo probably needs some more training. I mean, he's 5 2 and 2. I think, I think that he has a lot of potential. For one, he has to probably, probably just switch up a few things, but he's a, he's a good guy. He, he has some good shots, but he doesn't put his punch together. The right hand caught him backing out, and we're now finishing up round four in NYC. Solid action round. Yet another one. Third fight on our streaming program, Top Rank website. Michael Woods joined by Monty Barrett, reporter extraordinaire Christina Poncher. You know her on True TV. Top Rank has been running shows there, been doing quite well. Monty, if you're in that Diaz corner, what are you telling the Puerto Rican fighter? Well, I would tell him that you lost that round, you got to pick it up. You know, you got big shoes to fill. You have to start. You have to start establishing your jab. You, you lead with the right hand. Every time you throw the right hand, you're missing it. That's what I would tell him. So lead with your jab. Keep basic and stop winding up all your punches. Fire up that jab, says Monty Barrett to Christopher Diaz. Ten and zero. Oh. Got an unbeaten record, maybe. Up for grabs in NYC, starting round five. Gallardo, first punch of the round five, always sends a message, I want this fight, I'm being busy. See the Gallardo corner is wiping down the corner with that parka, that sleeveless parka that we referenced earlier. Get those folks to snow. Gallardo, he doesn't need a towel, he doesn't need anything, he's just busy. Making Diaz work ultra hard. Sneaky hand speed on the right hand from Gallardo. Sneaky uppercut. I mean, if you see it so many times, though, is it sneaky anymore, Monty? It's sneaky until you stop it. Right? <laughs> two minutes now. Almost two minutes in round five remaining. Gallardo jab to the body. Head movements, slipping punches. Mild frustration in Diaz now. Gallardo's a rough, tough guy. But Diaz is, Diaz is doing what he's supposed to do. I mean, sometimes when you know you got to fight one, you don't want to overwork and impress everybody. You got to fight your own fight.
Diaz has been all you can eat buffet for Gallardo on that right hand. He can't miss with it. He doesn't have home run power, but those are scoring blows. That right hand, solid, solid for Gallardo. Let's see how the judges are going to be seeing this if we uh, go the distance here in this featherweight fight. He yeah, slips a punch, moves away. And Gallardo back to doing what he does. Staying in his face, being busy. What well, Diaz should realize that he don't have to take a step forward. Gallardo's coming to him. All he needs to do is just be on counter mode and just use his jab, use his distance, and throw his one-twos and throw his little hook here and there. And when he gets in close, throw a good body shot. He's going forward, and he needs to be going backwards and establishing his jab. With a ball like Gallardo, it don't have to, don't have to take steps going forward. He's coming. Good. Gallardo, the busy bull in NYC. 5 2 and 2, 2 KOs. Deceptive record. Solid skills and work ethic and volume. He eats punches and then keeps coming forward. He has two stiff punches landed. Gallardo just kept on coming. Piling up punches. Now finishing the round. Unequivocally, absolutely, perhaps another round for Gallardo. Completely plausible it gets scored that way. I gave Gallardo the last two rounds. I'm right there with you, partner. If you're in the Gallardo corner, keep doing what you're doing, kid. And if you're in the Diaz corner, son, you might not be undefeated for very much longer. Headed to round six is Christopher Diaz's unbeaten record. Gonna stay that way. Monty, we see some recap here in that action. What are we seeing? We see it now. We see Gallardo getting caught. We see Gallardo getting caught with an with uppercut. I mean, he's been letting his uppercut all night. I guess Diaz took a page out of his book. Imitation being the sincerest form of flattery. Headed into another round here. Round six. Sixth and final round in NYC. Ref asks him to touch gloves. Gallardo says, okay, yeah, now let's get ready to rumble. First punch of the round for Gallardo. Comes right out, winging. Dips down. Lands the right hand in his face. When you're complaining to the referee, you're not paying attention to your foe, Monty. Exactly. Trainers don't like to see it. Yeah, because he takes his eyes off his opponent when he's, when he's complaining to the referee. That's a no, no. And you see Gallardo switching to lefty and then back righty. A little late in the game, switcheroony. Well, Gallardo's on the orthodox fight. I would expect that from him anyway. I'm surprised he didn't do it earlier. He's not a conventional fighter. Trading in the center of the ring in the theater. Gallardo throwing two for every Diaz one. Oh, Diaz trying to pick it up now. Gallardo backing up, but busy backing up, working nicely off the back foot. Diaz backing him up against the ropes. As you can tell, Diaz is very uncomfortable with fighting this way. You know why? Because this is not his fight. He doesn't have the fight like this. And his corner would tell him, listen, Stick with, your, stick with your basic. Stick with your jab. Stick with your one-two. Stay long. The guy can't beat you if you stay long. You see Diaz dropping the hand. The lead left hand dropping down. Fatigue could be a factor here. A lot of working hard in this fight. A lot of volume in round six here. Headed towards one minute remaining. Feeling like this one is up for grabs. Yeah, I saw Galato take a take a breather. A little, I guess those, those punches, those bite shots start to accumulate. Catch up to him. Gallardo squared up against the ropes. Diaz liking the openings, working hard. Gallardo fighting off the ropes, catches Diaz backing out. Minute remaining. And there's that uppercut on the right hand of the body. The only thing is, nothing, it's nothing on it. But it's a good combination with Gallardo's throwing. Come on, 
Escalado is a game fighter. I have a lot of respect for guys like him. Gallardo busy, not a power puncher, one punch KO artist, but accumulation of blows. Have Diaz looking tired in this sixth and final round, headed towards the home stretch. If Diaz fight to lose, he's giving it, he's he's making it close just by the way he's fighting. Everything is a good, everything, everything seems to be a power shot for him. To the home stretch in round six, Diaz against Gallardo in the Madison Square Garden Theater. A really good, solid featherweight rumble. fight tonight was interesting. Great matchmaker. If I see Gallardo getting his hands raised, I say, why not? Absolutely. You deserve that fight. You were very busy, Mr. Gallardo. Quitted yourself quite nicely. They say it's not how you start, it's how you finish, right? Looking at Gallardo, right eyed doesn't look too fatigued. Looks like he could go another few more rounds. He could fight a tenor, it looks like. Monty, do you get a sense in the body language of Diaz, what he feels the judges are going to say? He seems uncertain. He seems uncertain. He doesn't really seem that, that confident. Eyes are and down. I, and I would, if I was him, I would feel the same way as well. Uncertainty in the corner and the eyes of the corner as well. Bright eyed Gallardo. He looks confident. Third match of the evening streaming on the top rank website. Thank you for joining us. I'm Michael Woods, Monty Barrett, and Christina Poncher calling the fights for you. Judges going to congregate the center ring. Tabulations are being done. Doing the math, checking it twice. Here's the New York State Athletic Commission. Let's go to Thomas Triber, Diaz Gallardo, who won? Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Ken Ezzo scores it, 59 to 55. And both judges, James Pierce and Alan Rubenstein, score it the same, 58 to 56. All in favor of your winner, my unanimous decision. From Barranquitas, Puerto Rico, Christopher Pitufo. Yeah.